Hey, hello, and welcome to this course on Python descriptors. Now, why should you be interested in descriptors? Well, the really cool thing about descriptors, in my opinion, is that they allow you to implement your own magic. You will be diving into magic methods and you'll be taking full control of what happens when class attributes are being used. So you will be investigating what goes on under the hood in Python classes. So if you are the kind of person that is interested in what goes on under the hoods of Python things, then this course is definitely for you. Now, a word of warning, maybe you will be looking at classes in quite a bit of detail. So you want to make sure that you're up to speed with the basics when it comes to classes and class instances and attributes, for example. If not, that's okay. There's a very helpful link in the resources section that you can check out beforehand. You might also be picking up some new concepts such as protocols, for example, and something called the dict dunder attribute, but I don't think it's essential that you read up on those things before we start because I will cover the basics in this course. So what will you be learning in this course more specifically? So firstly, of course, what Python descriptors are. So you'll start from a definition and from that definition, you will dive into things such as protocols and descriptor protocols and magical methods and magic behavior. Then you will learn how to implement descriptors. So you will be writing some code, of course. There will be a song class and then a string validator class. And gradually you will improve this code to make it more flexible and more usable. And finally, you learn about something called the lookup chain. And you will learn that that is indeed how the magic is being implemented. So those are the topics that I would like to take you through. My name is Stephen Loyans and I will be your instructor for this course. I'm very happy that you're going on this journey with me. So let's dive straight in. In this lesson, you'll go through a brief introduction to descriptors. And a good place to start would be to understand what the point of them is actually. So the descriptor purpose is to create your own magic. Yes, indeed. And when it comes to descriptors, that means that you decide what happens when class attributes are accessed using the dot notation. So later in this course, you'll see an example where you can add functionality such that when a class instance is created, the input parameters are automatically validated. And that, is, of course, is just an example. You can create whatever magic you like. Now, before you can start coding, though, you'll need to study the definition first. So according to the official documentation, this is the definition. In general, a descriptor is an attribute value that has one of the methods in the descriptor protocol. That raises two questions for me. One, what's a descriptor protocol? And secondly, how can an attribute value have methods? I'm aware of classes having methods. So if my attribute value is a class or a class instance, it can have methods. That might sound a little bit confusing at the moment, but don't worry at the end of the lesson, there's actually a clear example of what that exactly means. But for now though, let me talk you through the descriptor protocol. And for that, I'll start with the question, what is a protocol? Well, that is a set of methods or attributes that an object must have to be considered of a given type. And that is probably also not entirely clear just based on what you're seeing on the screen. So I'll include a link to a great real Python tutorial. But secondly, let me make that a little bit clearer by looking at the descriptor protocol specifically. So for the descriptor protocol, which are those methods or attributes that define that descriptor protocol and what type of object must use these methods? Firstly, looking at the methods, well, these are the methods that define the descriptor protocol. Underscore, underscore, get, or dunder, get, dunder, set, dunder, delete, and then there's a fourth one done the set name. That one's actually optional. That's a lot of underscores on one slide. So I'll also include a link to a video tutorial that explains the use of underscores in Python. 
These methods seem to have input parameters like self and object, which I imagine is object and an object type and value and owner and name. For now, don't worry about that. We will look at what exactly those input parameters are when we look at the code. So those are the methods. Now, what is the type of object that must have those methods? Well, of course, that is going to be a class and that class or a class that has those methods will be called a descriptor class. It's also said that that class implements the descriptor protocol. Remember that the whole point of using descriptors is to create your own magic. And this magic is the result of descriptor classes having special behavior. Now that is the whole point. Now, how do you trigger this special behavior of these descriptor classes? Well, this is how it works. Firstly, you need a descriptor class. I've called that my descriptor. You need another class, which I've called my class. And this other class, my class, needs to have a class attribute, which I have called class attribute. And then the next bullet is absolutely crucial. To this class attribute, you need to assign an instance of the descriptor class. So that's what that line of code does. Class attribute equals my descriptor with the parentheses. So that is the instance of a descriptor class. And once your code is set up that way, then when you access the class attribute using the dot notation, that's when the magic that you have coded in the get and set and delete and set name done the methods, that's when that magic happens. As a final point for this lesson, I would like to come back to the descriptor definition, which was that a descriptor is an attribute value that has one of the methods in the descriptor protocol. And this is a line of code that should make that very clear because the attribute value here is my descriptor with the parentheses, which is an instance of a descriptor class and a descriptor class by definition has one or more of the methods of the descriptor protocol implemented. Okay, well, so much for the theory. I think the best way to learn is by doing. So in the next section, you'll start implementing your own descriptor. With the introduction covered in the previous lesson, you can now move on to an example of how to implement descriptors. So you'll be doing some coding. So please move to your favorite IDE and create a file called validator.py, all in lowercase. In this file, you will be creating a song class. And this class is not going to be a descriptor class. It is just going to be a standard class that we will build upon later in the course. So create your song class. Song is with a capital because it is the name of a class. The idea is that we will instantiate this class. So create the init method, which takes self as the first input parameter. And then we'll have a title which is a string and also an artist, which is also a string. All the init method is going to do is to assign the values of title and artist to instance attributes self.title and self.artist. That's it for the init method. Then also create an instance method, which is the dunder string method. Now you might know that the done the string method allows you to apply the string function to your class or to an instance of your class. And when you do that, it will return, well, whatever you wanted to return. I would like you to type an F string. And this F string will just show the values really of title and artist. So it will say, this is an open curly brackets, self.title close the curly brackets by and then open curly brackets again, self dot artist. That's it for the song class. What's left to do is to show you how that string done the method works. So if you make sure you save this file and then open up your REPL in the directory where you have saved validator.py. So in your REPL from validator import song with a capital S, 
So that's your song class. Now create an instance of your song class. I just call it S1 equals song. And the first input parameter was title. So I'm going to use what I think is the best song of all time. And that's A Forest by a band called The Cure. So because you have implemented the string done the method in your song class, you can now just apply the string function to your S1, which is your class instance, and it will then return, this is a forest by the cure. So that is your song class. And in the next lessons, you will build on this example. In the previous lesson, you have created the song class. And in this lesson, I would like to spend a minute to talk through the code and see how you can improve it. And of course, how you can incorporate descriptors. If you focus your attention to line four, the init method, you have asked title and artist to be strings, but actually there is nothing in the code that would stop you to have integers or anything that is not a string feeding into title and artist. Now we would want that to be string. So therefore the idea is to build in validation to make sure that title and artist are indeed strings. Now there are two options I can think of one you could build in a validation instance method, for example, in the song class, but I'm not loving that solution because validating a string isn't unique to a song. It could be needed for author names of books, for example, because we're validating strings, not songs. So I'm not liking that very much. I mean, the second option is that you could separate out the validation of the input parameters into another class that's called string validation class, for example. And the advantage is that that class can then be reused by other classes than song, and it can be coded actually by other people. It could be maintained by others. So that to me feels like a much neater solution. Now, I want this validation to apply to the title, okay? And later also to the artist, but let's just do it for the title first. And also I want that to happen, that validation, as soon as a user enters the title. So what I want to happen is as soon as a user enters a song where the title isn't a string, I would like a message to come up and say, hey, this needs to be a string. So in other words, I want that to happen as soon as the user creates a song instance. Now, when the user creates a song instance, then that is when the init method is being triggered. So I would like to build that into the init method. And ideally, I would like to do this without adding any code. And this is exactly what you can do with the descriptor, because the magic of a descriptor is that you decide what happens when the dot notation is being used. So on line five, title is being accessed using the dot notation. So that is when I would like that validation to happen. And that is what your descriptor will allow you to do. In the next lesson, then you will build the descriptor. In this lesson, you will be creating a descriptor class that will be used to validate that title is a string. You know that the magic of the descriptor classes happens when the dot notation is being used. The dot notation is being used for title anyway, in two places, as far as I can see in the song class, that's firstly on line five, it says self dot title equals title. So this is where self dot title is being updated. A value is being assigned to it. And then on line nine, self dot title is being used, but is not updated. So that links to two different Dunder methods in your descriptor class. With that in mind, go to the top of your file and create your string validator class. So string validator is using camel case, as is the convention for class names. The first Dunder method to implement is the get method. So def underscore underscore get underscore, underscore, open brackets, and then self obj and obj type equals none. And for now, just pass. 
So get is the Dunder method that is associated with retrieving the value. So when the dot notation is being used, now that is line 12, the dot notation is being used for title without the value of title being updated, then the get Dunder method will be triggered. When the value is being updated, as is the case in line eight, then that will trigger the set done the method. So, and then again, self, obj, and value. But now again, pass. The final step in setting up your basic structure is to link the song class to the string validator class. And that needs to happen in a particular way. The song class needs to have a class attribute. Now it's important that it is a class attribute. This will have no effect for instance attributes. And so this class attribute needs to have the name of the attribute for which you want to trigger the magic. So that needs to be title. And to this class attribute, you need to assign an instance of the descriptor class. So in your case, that is string validator. And then don't forget the parentheses to make it an instance. And that's the basic setup of your descriptor class. Before you do more coding though, let me talk you through the input parameters of the description methods in the next lesson. Thank <laughs> you.